Welcome to Wine Road, the wine, when, and where of Northern Sonoma County. I'm your host, Marcy Gordon, with Beth Costa, Executive Director of the Wine Road. Thanks to Ron Rubin, we're able to keep our podcast rolling along. The financial support of River Road Family Vineyards and Winery allows us to keep recording, keep sipping wine, and keep sharing stories with our listeners. Check out their website at riverroadvineyards.com and explore their Chardonnay, as well as a finely crafted Pinot Noir from the Russian River Valley. That's riverroadvineyards.com. And hey, thanks, Ron, for allowing us to make this show happen. Welcome to episode 209. Today, our guest is Elizabeth Miller, coming to us from DeVero Farms and Winery, which is just outside Fieldsburg. Yeah. Welcome, Elizabeth. It's great to be back with you both. Yes. I'm so excited great to, to see have you, you here. Yeah. Excited to hear all about what's going on at DeVero. Yes. They are a special spot. We certainly are. We really are. There's. I've been in the industry for quite a while, and there's... Not quite a place like Devero. Nothing compares. Nothing compares. I, I'm, That's a song, yes. I believe. <laughs> Should right. I burst in the what? song now? What song? <laughs> Nothing compares to you. Wait, hold on, folks. We're going to liquor her up a little. That's and she's right. going to do karaoke You'd podcast. really have to belt it out to make it sound right. But Okay, I get it. But I won't do that. I'll have to do a rewrite on the lyrics and make it all about the farm. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Anyways, turning back to Elizabeth. <laughs> So it is unique. It really, really is. I've known about DeVero for years now as a as a Sonoma County resident and someone in the industry, and I always knew that it was special, and I always knew I really did want to work there as well. Um, when Dreams do come they true, do Elizabeth. They do come true. They <laughs> do are true. Someone, I always think from our previous episodes with you, you really manifested this. Yes, And yes. I always think about you and thinking, like, that is the power of this is what I want, and you got it. Yeah. 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 Life went from being a New York education to now <laughs> my coworkers are some some pigs, yeah. really, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but I I always knew of DeVero, and I did want to manifest this ability to, to, to work there, work at a place like DeVero. Um, one thing that always struck me about DeVero from afar before I joined was, was just the name. I, I noticed that the name was DeVero Farms and Winery. Right. And I always thought that was interesting that the word farms came first. Right. And now that I spend every day there, I realize why. Because we are this living farm. Yeah. We practice biodynamics and regenerative agriculture. Um, it's really, really fascinating. A lot of wineries are now doing that, and a lot of farms are doing that, which is good news for the planet that we're going in that direction. But I think what I've observed is very noteworthy at DeVero is we kind of simplify a lot of those concepts. We pull back the curtain and our guests are actually able to have a tactile experience yeah, with all of that. They're immersed in it. They really are. You know, they walk through this ecosystem. They see these pollinator gardens, these edible gardens, olive groves, fruit trees, vineyards, the dry creek which flows through, and they can see this dynamic living system. It becomes a very real experience for them. It's right. been amazing. And the word davvero, which means... It means the truth. The truth. Yeah. Exactly. A, a lot of people will, especially because we specialize in Italian wines, will make this assumption that it's an Italian family name and we're run right. and founded by an Italian right. family. And that certainly is a very reasonable expectation in Sonoma County because we have such a great history of Italian growers, mm -hmm. Italian winemakers, yeah. you know, dating way back before Prohibition. But while that might sound to explain Devero, it doesn't. Devero is a phrase. It means the real thing or the truth. Exactly. And that refers to how we farm. Essentially, how we farm is nothing new. It's everything original again, right? We're just working with nature. Um, and then, of course, it's a nod to Italy. Uh, our connection to Italy is through our founders' love for Italy, but more so to climate. Mm. So if, if you look at the globe, you know, here you start with us from the studio and shoot right across the Atlantic Ocean. Where are you going to land? You're going to land in the center of the Italian boot. Right. So a lot of what we farm in terms of our grape varieties and then the olive trees we have are informed by Italy because our climate really, really works very well for right. that. And, that, and that's yeah. why a lot of our Italian immigrants just felt very at home here. Very much the, so. Even the landscape looks similar. It does. The things that grow here, the type of um, climate. So it makes sense because the I when I'm in Italy, 
sometimes you hear that phrase is like, really? Like the yeah. barrel? You know, <laughs> is that true? You know, you know it's turning a, a little bit of an insult on its head yeah. rather than saying, for real? <laughs> yeah, for real. But, I, but we're, it is a very... We're spinning it positive. I've always, yes, yes, but I've always loved the name. I think it's yeah, so cool. And it is. you guys have such great branding and packaging. Yes. That, that label is so it's dynamic. It's so eye-catching, It's yeah. beautiful. It's gorgeous. We have... You'll always be corrected, everybody says. Is that a rooster? No, it's a hen. So we have a beautiful, <laughs> colorful hen. Our internal nickname for that is Plucky. Plucky is sort of our <laughs> in, inside mascot. <laughs> oh, and uh, and then that beautiful striping. Uh, so it's a beautiful modern label. That's a nod to some of the you know original Italian growers, particularly in Tuscany and southern Italy. Yeah, it's yeah. lovely. It's yeah. very evocative. I, I think it's spot on. It is. And Tasting wine starts with a visual and expectation. Yeah. So, boom, you start in a good mood because you're looking at this so, label. So, speaking of wine, tell I us know, about should... this incredible wine you brought here that people will most likely have never heard. Yeah. And yeah. there's a reason. Yes. And so, tell us about this, Yes, Elizabeth. yes. I really wanted to bring this both to you today, especially because you both know your way around wine, and a lot of it's listeners amazing. know their way around wine. And what's nice is to always try something that you have no expectation exactly. for. Exactly. You know, mm-hmm. you don't know what it's supposed to be so you just evaluate it yeah. on its own you just accept it you just accept it so the this, barrel. Da barrel, the, the, what's the real thing here <laughs> your real opinion your real like or dislike um so this is a grape variety called palagrello bianco and that is as it sounds an italian grape variety it comes from the region of campania and if you're looking at the boot that's like the ankle mm-hmm. part mm-hmm. Um, and in Italy, it actually went extinct for years because hmm. of phylloxera. Oh, yeah. And it was just a few growers in Campania who have done research and have brought it back. So our founder several years ago brought the cuttings for that here into Sonoma County and planted in the property. We were the first in the United States to do so. And I think we're still the only oh my God. winery in the United that States that grows phenomenal. them, which is a kind of amazing. Um but also, it's very cool the way we have trained it. So when a visitor comes to us and they're arriving on West Side Road in Healdsburg and they drive in right on the road and then when they park their car, you'll see a really unique block that's very architectural. It has all of these arches, these repeating arches. And it kind of is like if you're in Florence or something and you're walking through like a portico or a mm-hmm, forum, yeah. these repeating arches. That's our Pollagrello. We've okay. trained it in this wow. manner. So it's very architectural. It's very artistic. But then it also properly supports the Pollagrello. Um, and so it's this beautiful blend of like art and farming. And when a visitor comes, you could walk right underneath that. Oh, my that. gosh. I need yeah. to go get a photo of that. Are the, I yeah. need to go see that. Are the Pollagrello clusters extremely large? They're they're an average size, okay. um, and uh, they they grow very very well mm-hmm. on our property. So we we have it grown there, and then we have another half acre on an elevated part of our farm, and both of those blend together for this bottle. Um, and so it's it's not too finicky of of a grape variety for us. Um, uh, it does very very well. Yeah. As, as you well, would it has an amazing nose. I tell you this, the yeah. scent of this alone. Yes. I mean, I would. Put a little bit behind my ears. Um, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it, it's it's just yes, it's got it's got a you know it's got this tropicalness, but also has yeah. a little sandalwood. There is there something very evocative. That definitely a limestoney kind. That Campania. It smells like Campania to me. Yes, and yeah. the wines I've had from Campania. Yeah, and um, yeah, wow. It's great. It's there. Some wine can be all things to all people at all moments, and this is one of those wines. Uh, you really can go into a serious meal with this, but at a proper cool temperature, you could just cruise into the first part of your evening as well yeah. alone. It, it's pretty it's pliable. It's got awesome acidity and mm-hmm. the structure, the flavors. It's flavor on flavor on flavor. Yeah. It is like a never-ending story. It's yes. really great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What and do you think, is. Bethy Beth? I was just thinking, oh my gosh, I could so sip on She's this. She's just w- watering my plants at the end of the day. Right. <laughs> you know, not a meal, just, you know. We Beth needed... is just staring at the bottle. Well, it's so, I mean, the label really is beautiful. Yeah. And she I have never variety. had this before, obviously. It's really delicious. Yeah, yeah. you get to check one more grape variety yes. off of yeah. uh, your list. So yes. I'm just sitting here. I'm memorizing. Yes. I'm trying to remember how to pronounce it. That's why I'm staring at it. <laughs> i got to plant that seed in my mind. Just That's finish right. the bottle and you'll be pronouncing it all day long. Yeah. <laughs> but but yes. what's funny about this, or not funny, this is a white that has a lot of body. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's really it uh, great 
depth to it, depth mm-hmm. of flavor, but also how it would be great with food, great with pairing. I mean, this is a, you know, this is not a frivolous wine at all. This is no. a serious wine, but it, it has a fun, fun factor to it, yes. it feels like to yes. me. Yes, yeah. Anything that expands your palate and wakes up your brain is really excited. Yeah. This has woken yes. me up. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I'm awake. Uh-oh. <laughs> Thank you know for bringing good. this. Oh, I really wanted, I was very excited to share particularly this great variety. So Amazing. tell us more about the portfolio and what else we might find among the wines and yeah. the vines yeah. at Davero. <laughs> well, we have vines and then some. Um, well, let me let me start with what came before the vines, actually. So a lot of people historically who have been around Sonoma County for, for a while first thought of and identified Devero as an olive oil producer. Right. So we've been making wine since about 2000, but olive oil was about a decade prior to that. Right. Um, That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. That's so so oil. our founder um, brought some cuttings over in the late 80s. He went to this old Tuscan grove that had like trees that were about 800 years old, and he brought those over. When he did, the USDA told him that he was the first to bring olive trees back into the country since the late 1800s. Wow. So it was really, really notable at the yeah. time. Um started growing those, started pressing and making an olive oil. But then something really special happened, which put Devero on the map, kind of brought us to where we are today, set set us up for the success. So we're all wine people, and a lot of the listeners will probably remember this. Um, We think of the Judgment of Paris of 1976 for wine, you know, an American wine, upset amongst a French tasting, right? Yes. A similar thing happened for the olive oil. Um, So this was in the 90s at a New York City restaurant. There was a a trade media delegation in from Italy doing these these big tastings, and they did this big blind lineup of Tuscan olive oils, and a restaurateur had put Devero's olive oil into the lineup, and it won the blind tasting. Wow. Oh, my gosh. And they didn't reveal the answer for about 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, yeah. So oh, yeah, it, we have a problem. <laughs> Mamma mia. <laughs> yeah. So it really, it really put Devero into the space of olive oil. Um, and then it was about 10 years later that the wine came along. Um, Starting in about 2000, they started with Sangiovese and then introduced Sagrantino. Mm, boy. Now, our Sagrantino is currently grown at one of our very special vineyards. So Sagrantino in Italy, for people who love Sagrantino, might know where it comes from, a DOC, a growing region called Monte Falco. Mm-hmm. Sagrantino de Monte Falco. The name of our vineyard here is Hawk Mountain. Monte Falco. <laughs> so oh, we've funny. we've named our first Sagrantino vineyard and our first vineyard after that place in oh Italy. Yes. And it continues all these years to grow our amazing Sagrantino in San Giovese. And now many years later, we've introduced many other things. We have Barbera. We have some Montepulciano growing. We produce a Rosato and a Frizzante and Vermentino, Fiano. Um, our Fiano is incredible. That's probably another white grape variety a lot of people haven't right. heard of or tried. <laughs> oh, ours is Oh, it'll wake up your day. <laughs> you know, if you're feeling like an afternoon lull, uh, you know, heading maybe into 5 p.m. after work, it, it just is so invigorating and refreshing. It's <laughs> a great description. I know. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Well, because the Italian varietals, they grow so well here. They really right. do. They just thrive. Yes. And yes. it seems like they're get, coming along. More and more people are planting them. More and more people. I think it's, it is the, the way of our landscape and our climate that Italian varietals Varietals are the way to go. Very, very yeah, much. We so. have a whole mm-hmm. category or a whole page on our website now of just who who among our wineries are producing Italian varietals. Mm-hmm. And people are looking for that. I think they you are. you've come wine tasting multiple times and you've tasted the same types of varietals. So yes. you're looking for something new. It is, yeah. yeah. And and you have again a climate that supports it. Right. But another interesting thing, just frankly, about Italy is it produces so many different grape varieties. Yeah. So we can do that here, and that's pretty invigorating for right. our visitors or for people mm-hmm. who want to purchase Sonoma County wines that, you know, theoretically, if we want to do the 3,000 varieties and and, um, yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah, plus. and clones that they have here, we can do that. We so, can. so it brings a great degree of variety mm-hmm. and interest, I think, to and the also, tasting experience. 
your portfolio has from a, a very wide range. So from a light to very robust, like Sagrantino, yes. that yes. is a robust red wine. Correct. You know, like in line with a Primitivo. Yes. But even more so. Mm-hmm. And then you have your lighter whites. And, and so it really has something for everybody in that range of Italian varietals are just very accessible wine at all ranges. They mm-hmm. really are. Right now, what we're showing this summer is our most recent vintage of our Vermentino. Light, bright, refreshing, yeah. what we expect. And then we also pour our Sagrantino. Our current vintage on that is 2014. Mm. It needs that wow, time. Yes. It needs These that time. time. And oh. now it's singing wow. beautifully. Yeah. So it, we do really feel that range very yeah. quickly in, the, yeah. in that I'm lineup. S- you don't see much Sagrantino. No, here. we should see more People of it. People shy away from it, I think. <laughs> I think they it think it's extremely time. big, extremely yeah. tannic. But, but it's, done well. it's one of my favorite yeah. wines. <laughs> Even you don't see it here. Yes. So you actually have, and uh, maybe both aren't open to the public, but I think they are two properties. You have the uh, original farm uh, ranch property, and then you have the tasting room on West Side Road, right? Correct. So the entirety of the property composes those two parcels, what we call our upper farm and our lower farm. The upper farm was the original vacation property of our founder that then became a a site for these original olive trees um, and then our Hawk Mountain Vineyard. Mm -hmm. And then he acquired the lower property um, much later on. Um, That was acquired in 2008. And Mm -hmm. that's the property that visitors would come to and you'd see. So that property is fascinating. And And the lower farm is really our best demonstration of regenerative right. farming. Mm-hmm. So that lower property was a conventionally farmed um, grapevine nursery, <laughs> and it had been chemically farmed for decades. Mm. Uh, when they took that over, they started regenerative farming. And the whole concept of regenerative farming is, how do I regenerate, mm-hmm. rebuild living systems? Mm-hmm. So they took this very denuded property, and then today, now, we have this gorgeous organism, essentially, Mm -hmm. with all of these different parts to it, gardens and olive groves, um, you you know, everything from healthy microbes to healthy piggies. It really is a proper ecosystem. And what I really like is, again, that's right in front of all of our guests. So this is is something that happened. You can all see it. It's hand on. (laughs) The the uh, the other day we were doing some of our preparations, um, and these are sprays that you would apply to the property. Mm-hmm. So our soil keeper Michael, that's his title. We have a soil keeper in house. Um, <laughs> he was making this particular preparation that had two ingredients. It had nettles, which grow in our garden, and then it, we also salvaged willow bark and willow leaves from right from the California native willows that grow on the creek on the dry creek there. And he essentially steeped them and created a tea. I'm saying make a little tea. And make a little tea. And then he would spray this on the property. Mm -hmm. Both of those things have a beautiful benefit to the property. They kind of act like disease prevention Mm -hmm. as an aspirin stretch prevention. But this was the kicker. And this was happening with guests right there touring the garden. Mm -hmm. As he's taking the bucket and he's reloading his spray pack, he has his own personal cup. And he's scooping into the bucket and drinking it himself. Oh, wow. (laughs) And it's like, when's the last time you saw your gardener, you know, consuming the same thing they were about to put on your lawn? If only. If only. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, that really was just such a palpable visual example. Well, yeah, that's a mind-blowing thing. It is a mind-blowing thing, yes. And so when a guest sees that, they kind of have an aha moment. Exactly. These big concepts become practical to them, and they they get it. We're we're working in a healthy way with these systems. Well, it's... It's believable when you see it. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yes, rather than far off somewhere yeah. in a book. Yeah. Uh, to be able to see it, feel it, witness these practices is is just an inspiration yeah. to many of I our guests. I think that's become more important to people, too. You I know, think so, too. We're so aware of what's in our bodies, what's in the ground. It you has. know, it's not only you you regenerated, you you rehabilitated that property yes. in a way. You know, and it takes time. It's like a drug addict. They, it does. They have to be weaned mm-hmm. and then carefully brought up into with the new practices and without um you know the pa- you know commercial practices that can be uh, addictive to the plant yeah. almost you it's know true. when people switch over it's not just a matter of switching over it's kind of a process it is it's a process and then you have to let nature come back to it so one of the great things we did this year and then we built an amazing event around it is we worked with this organization called the Monarch Joint Venture mm-hmm. they're this great organization that's working to restore migratory patterns for monarchs and other butterflies mm-hmm. essentially they want a monarch to be able to fly a thousand miles look down at the ground and like everything it sees and find good homes for itself 
yourself. So we got a grant from them, and we were able to bring in and plant a lot of flowers that are very beneficial. They eat those flowers. And then also milkweed. They lay their eggs in the milkweed. We started this last fall. Our garden is now rich with what monarchs and other butterflies want. So we're seeing a great deal of butterflies on property. Mm. In the in the springtime, we had an event called our Butterflies and Buds Festival, and we had this beautiful kind of multi-station hands-on event. And the butterflies, they knew, they signed up. They were there. Like They <laughs> got the memo. They were all there it's that amazing. day. <laughs> the, but it takes that time, right. and, yeah. then, and then nature shows up for and you. And patience. And patience, yes. <laughs> That's the thing. The hillside behind my house, I've planted so much milkweed for that. Yeah. And it is amazing. I mean, at this point, I just sit in my backyard, and I think, I, I'm a winner, man. <laughs> I have scored here. It's amazing. <laughs> it really is. I mean, is. you just plant the right things. And I mean, that's come. the way my backyard oh, is. Right yeah. here yeah. in Sebastopol, we have the Hallberg Butterfly yes. Garden. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's yes. Yes, like yes. once a year, it's yeah. kind of impressive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you wow. create the right conditions yeah. and then nature does what it's supposed to do. Yeah. Exactly. And then we benefit from it. Of <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Come and see something simple, right. like our soil keeper drinking a preparation. I know. That's you just make like, that wow, that's just, Yeah. That, or, that is an aha you know, moment. Or seeing our piggies and, yeah. you know, who are very good farmers. We know what they do. They, you know, they take things in and they put things out yeah. <laughs> that are very, very good for our property. Yeah. And so it's something tactile like that really is it's it's the the evidence of the work, right? Um, but then it's the understanding, the education mm-hmm. beyond very confusing logos and big names yeah. and things. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> it's the real thing. Exactly. It's the real. The it's Navarro. the Vero. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, that's right. I fell right into that. There you go. You set up. <laughs> set up. I really that was set nice. up. That was. <laughs> I know. I'll give you your five dollars later. Okay. He's a good straight man. <laughs> Time for our Fast Five. Who do we have on the line now? Uh, hi, this is Katerina Bonda from West Wines. Hi, Katerina. What's your Fast Five recipe? Uh, so I'm thinking of lamb chops with rosemary, sage, and lavender. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. In the summer, you can find so much wonderful um, uh, herbs. And uh, what I do is very simple. I'm uh, using all these different, you know, it could be rosemary, sage, lavender, parsley, whatever you have. Mix it with salt and pepper. And then I just pat this into lamb chops. And I put that in a plastic bag, uh, cover it with cling wrap and let it rest in the fridge. And then I uh, get some garlic cloves in a pan, um, you know, mix it in with these more of the same herbs Mm -hmm. and uh, cottage cheese. And then just, you know, like this whole smooth, this becomes the sauce. And then I just put the lamb chops on the barbecue and when they're done, I, we serve them and we have this garlic cream with all the herbs and just put, you know, a dollop on each uh, That sounds chop. fantastic. Okay, so I've never heard of that. That sounds so that good. That sounds delicious. So it's, it's like a creaminess of the herbs comes yeah. through. I, I think that would be wonderful. Yeah. And what wine would you serve with this? Um, I typically bring out a Cabernet Sauvignon from West Wines. So that's my favorite <laughs> pairing with this. Yeah. Good choice. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I would have never thought of the cottage cheese thing. That is, that sounds like something I could do. Oh yeah, this is <laughs> and very it would sound simple. like I've really done something amazing. <laughs> I bet that's delicious. I love yes. it. Yes. Okay. Well, we'll put that in the show notes and the ingredients and how to make it and and send us a note if you make it because we'd love to hear from you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Thanks you for... so much. Thank, Thank you. you. So, how often? Do people need a reservation to come visit you, or do they just stop in, or what's the story? What's so the scoop? we're open seven days a week. Okay. Uh, it, we have wine. We have seats. Well, we're always willing to have someone come on in and, and accommodate uh, those walk-ins. We do recommend reservations mm-hmm. uh, for some of our more immersive experiences. Right. So uh, our key experience we call Discover the Farm. It's a private experience where you just work with one of our farm ambassadors. Mm-hmm. You walk around for about... 30 minutes to an hour. You tour all of these different zones that I told you about and learn how how they work together. You know, you're smelling things, you're clipping things and tasting things. And then we guide you through a tasting of five of our wines and our olive oils. Mm -hmm. That's always a part of the visit. Um, And then we pair those with some of our best Sonoma County local cheeses Mm. and then jams that we make from our property. So Mm. we have our wine, we have our oil, but we also produce about 10 kinds of jams Mm -hmm. from all of our trees and honey. And those are a part of it. So we really want when someone comes to 
you know, smell the garden, touch the garden, and then taste the full bounty of the farm and our surrounding area. Right. That's the experience. Yeah. I mean, that sounds like an incredible it tasting is. experience. <laughs> and the most mm-hmm. amazing thing is it's like two minutes from downtown. Heels Heels it's right off the yeah. 101. We couldn't yeah. be more convenient for, right there. you know, quick, 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 quick pop in for from this, the city. Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. for feeling like yep. if you're so far away from it all, but you're really right there. You're right there. I know. It is wonderful. So if you book that tasting, is it just... Y- your party or are you paired up with other people or how's private. That... We do that private. Wow. Yeah. I mean yeah. that does sound like something I need to do. It is great. Yeah. yeah. And our our our, our farm ambassadors really, really know their way around the farm yeah. and around all of these big concepts and they're they such great it. communicators yeah. to just you know make it simple and make it fun as right. well. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Mm, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to have to do it. Let's I need, get it I on need the books. something to do. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So we, that's, so that's, so it sounds like you have other experiences, but that sounds like the cream of the crop. Right it there. is the cream of the crop. That's right. Um, anyone who visits will taste our olive oil as well. And mm-hmm. that's always really important. That's where our story started. We have so many special events going on. Yeah. So this summer, we've started a number of classes. We have a art show going on for the next several months. We worked with this. Uh, artist and her subject is our female farmers oh. and the, these paintings they'll make you cry they're yeah. gorgeous they really are um, and you know you'll see a woman do, pruning something yeah. and, and you'll, her face is so in love yeah. with the plant that she's working in so every visitor will come see that anybody's also just welcome to yeah. stop by and, and see that and then September what we're doing on September 7th is uh, instead of doing an after harvest Let's all celebrate that we did it party. Yeah, we lived. Um, yeah. We're kind of doing a kickoff. Uh, we're doing an event that we're calling Ode to the Grape Celebration. And grape. so it's just kind of at the beginning of harvest. And the idea is let's focus on the grape. And we came up with the phrase, focus on the grape from the roots to the shoots to the fruits. And we basically <laughs> have activities and things around each of those things. So we have these musicians who are going to be doing like a life cycle of the grapevine dance. Um, we're going to open our cellar and have people really be able to taste barrels and identify different uh, grapes. The art show will be up as well. We're going to be debuting a new wine of ours uh, named Fattoria, the Farmer's ah, Blend. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just have to tease that yeah. and everyone will have to taste that when they get there. So for us, we really want all of our visits to just spark a connection to nature and design yeah. our our events around that. Mm -hmm. So we invite people to join us on that date. That sounds fantastic. (laughs) No kidding. The roots to the shoots (laughs) to the the roots. roots. Exactly. (laughs) All the important parts. Yes. Oh my God! That's I see amazing. that as a very long bumper sticker. Yeah. I know that's right. Where is that on a T-shirt somewhere? <laughs> yes, it wraps around <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, let's see. Anything else we need to know? If somebody were to come and visit. We, we just invite people to come and, yeah. and, and see our gardens. Our gardens right now, particularly throughout the growing season, are just in amazing bloom. Mm-hmm. Another wonderful thing that we have uh, at our winery is a great farm team that's very engaged with our visitors. So when you find yourself meandering through the garden, it's okay to interrupt somebody who's working because <laughs> they, they they they're all going to be happy. I mean, yeah. you know, there's many places that drink the Kool-Aid. We, we drink our preparations and so we really, <laughs> we believe in, in what we do. We drink it. <laughs> well, they want to share. The yeah, they're proud we, of what they're and doing. They're, and they want to talk about yeah, it. Yeah, they're proud yes. of what they're doing so they yes. want to talk about it. Yeah. yeah that yeah. sounds great. So visit us and interrupt us at work, please. We invite <laughs> <laughs> and this sounds like it's a very kid-friendly uh, place. Can children are welcome? Or yeah, we so all of our guided tastings are for twenty-one and older. Right. Uh, but uh, with a well-behaved child, yeah. I think it's a beautiful place to visit. You know, it's again a very tactile experience. A lot of colors and textures. Mm-hmm. We have the pigs there, so they certainly enjoy that. I think it's a great learning <laughs> yeah. experience. Yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't love a nice pig? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do. <That's> right. <laughs> okay. That sounds. That's so great. What a great place for you. It is. I mean, I yes. can feel it. How much you love it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, every every day there is really really magnificent, and you know, you take a laptop, you sit in a little area of the farm. That's a good work day, I would say. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> right. That sounds nice. Yes. <laughs> okay. So anything else, Miss Marcy? Nothing on my docket. Um yeah, so 
This is on sale in the tasting room? It and... certainly is. So it's always on sale. It's on the website. And then it's also um, uh, part of our current tasting lineup. So mm-hmm. every visitor who's visiting us through this season will start with this with this wine. How and this many, is paired. Yes. How many years have you been making this? Uh, it's been made for, I think, about a decade at this yeah. point. It is, yeah. it is just fabulous. Yeah, yeah. Really I, keep che- I keep checking. And yes, yeah, it is. I know. <laughs> One other thing I will encourage is we really, because not everybody can always visit the farm, Mm -hmm. we've tried this year to start really bringing what we do every day out to the world. So on our social media, we're doing really great behind the scenes videos on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. We shoot with our farm team, our soil keeper, our vineyard manager, our our head winemaker. And they basically take you into the property and tell you what they're doing every day. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's very, you know, action packed and... And they're great teachers of these concepts. Mm-hmm. They're teaching you about something and then they're showing it to you. Right. So if you can't see us, that's a great way to get behind the scenes with us on a regular do, basis. Do you do any virtual events at all? No, but uh, maybe you've given me an idea for the future. Yeah. I, I feel like people really did them during COVID and then quit. Yeah. And it's like you shouldn't have quit because customers still can't necessarily fly here every month, yeah. and but they still want that connection. Yes, exactly. So, yeah, I keep promoting virtual events. <laughs> I, I know that they're a lot of work, <laughs> but I think that they can pay off. Yes. But just like the videos on Instagram, I think that's great. Yeah. So what is your Instagram? Is just Devero? At Devero Wines. At Devero Wines. At okay. Devero Wines, yes. Perfect. <laughs> so it's Devero, cultivators of the vine, stewards of the land. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I just can't wait to visit. I mean, you have yeah. such incredible positive energy. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, don't you want to go do that tour? Yeah. I, well, I've you know, it's been a while. I was telling Elizabeth before we started recording that it's been a while since I've been there, and I know there's been a lot has changed and a lot yes. has been developed. So I'm anxious to come come by. You know, it's like for residents, you know, it's like the Empire State Building. You know, we don't always go That's to the top right. unless the someone's here. That's right. right. But I'm trying to make more of an effort to get out and just go enjoy it on its own mm-hmm. merit. I don't need anybody to take around. I just want to go oh, yeah, enjoy uh, it for myself. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. it's worthwhile. That's mm-hmm. how I want to do everything now. <laughs> yeah, you should. Just for myself. <laughs> Beth has turned over a new leaf, as being yeah, me it's a, first. It's a new me. <laughs> well, you are welcome to come to Devero by yourself yeah, anytime you'd and like. And just enjoy. <laughs> yes. Yeah, there's a lot of beautiful things here that we keep missing. Okay. I don't think I have anything else, Elizabeth. So find you at DeveroFarms.com. On... Devero.com, yes. Devero.com. Mm-hmm. And definitely check it out, folks. This is a, you know, you don't want to miss out on these wines. They're pretty special. Yeah. So, as usual, I have one more thing. Oh, you have one more thing. <laughs> we tell you to have anything else and you say no. <laughs> I know. Well, you know, it takes me a minute and then it kicks in. Oh, yeah. Uh, I should mention that September 14th is the Harvest Wine Trail. And so tickets are available online at wineroad.com. It's $40. There's over 40 wineries for the day of wine tasting. It's walk-in tasting. It really is. I call it the golden ticket of wine tasting because, you know, tasting fees add up. Mm-hmm. This is one day for $40 for many of those wineries that you want to visit. Um, and Such a deal. And the website does have a program, so it shows the wines, exact wines that each winery will offer you. So you'll see ahead of time exactly what, you know, what you want to taste and where you want to go. So that's okay. September 14th. That's great. Wineroad.com. Okay. All of this will be in the show notes. We'll put this beautiful wine in the show notes. We'll put a link to Devero and to how you can get to the farm and... We'll see you, Elizabeth, on the wine room. Thank you for being here. We're going to see her. I'm going. All right. We get it. (laughs) I'll be there. You're coming. (laughs) I need to get out. (laughs) Thank you. 